The New York Knicks take game four in Philadelphia. They are one game away from advancing to the second round. Let's talk about it. Well, 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 welcome back to New York Sports Wicker Media. I'm Watu K99. Thank you, as always, for taking the time to watch these videos. So the game has gone final as of a few minutes ago. The Knicks, after winning both games at home, games one and two, I said they had to go down to Philly and just take one of the two and have a chance to take the series in five in New York. And that is exactly what they did. After dropping game three, they take a hard-fought, very tight game four, 97-92 in uh, Madison Square Garden South, also known as the Wells Fargo Arena. And it was shaky. You know, Sixers get off to a very, very quick start. Knicks had to catch up. They trail by as many as 12 points at one point. But I got to tell you, at the third quarter, at the very end of the third quarter, the Knicks had rallied. They'd taken a 77-76 to lead. When Jalen Brunson lands awkwardly after a jump shot, and it looked like he was limping and going to the locker room, at that point I could have seen the series being over if he wasn't able to come back. Because let's be honest, this was a game when a lot of the Knicks players, especially Hart and DiVincenzo, did not have their best. We'll get into that all in a little bit. But this was a game where Brunson's scoring had to lead the Knicks to victory, and that's exactly what happened. 47 points sets a new Knicks playoff record, and that goes back a lot of years. Breaks Bernard King's record by one point, shot 18 for 34 from the field, 2 of 8 from 3, had 10 assists. He is actually the first Nick, is Jalen Brunson, to score 40 points and have 10 assists in a single playoff game. That's pretty good. So in the fourth quarter, without Brunson initially, I have to admit I was pretty, I was pretty worried. The one thing that gave me a little bit of hope was that I knew Joel Embiid would have to go to the bench eventually because he's just not, he does not have the conditioning to play 48 minutes after coming back from this injury. But what is Nick Nurse doing? If you're a Philadelphia 76ers fan, and you've, let's be honest, a lot of 76ers fans, from what I see, have been blaming the referees for everything that's gone wrong. There is only one person to blame for this game, and that is your head coach. Un unbelievable. He puts Joel Embiid in the corner. I know he could shoot outside, but let's think about this. Isaiah Hardenstein taken out of the game with five fouls in the third quarter alone. He wasn't coming back for the fourth quarter until the very end. Mitchell Robinson gave it a go in practice, but he could not go today either. All you have is Precious Achua, you know, basically playing who doesn't even uh, who doesn't even play down low. He doesn't even guard Embiid. Josh Hart, who could do it a little bit, he's got five fouls as well. So what happens? Tom Thibodeau, and give him all the credit in the world, puts OG Ananobi on Embiid. Because you know what? If Nick Nurse is just going to leave Embiid out there in the corner on the wing, well, put your best wing defender on him, and it worked to a T. Embiid held to one point in the fourth quarter, could not make a, a, a field goal at all. I cannot believe that that, that worked. Joe Embiid was a decoy. The, the MVP of the league was a freaking decoy in, this, in the fourth quarter. Absolutely crazy. But, the play, but I thought the sequence that made the difference. 93-89, the Knicks lead. And this was about with about a minute 30 to go. All right, so Knicks are up 93-89, and the Sixers have the ball. Oubre misses a three for Philadelphia. It's a long rebound. Kyle Lowry grabs it. Very good rebound. Gives it over to Tobias Harris. He shoots a three. He misses. Precious Achua gets the defensive rebound for the Knicks. Knicks work their way down the court. Jalen Brunson, who, who has been... Guarded, I think, very, very well for most of the series, uh, especially up until today. But certainly in the first two games, Philadelphia did a great job limiting his scoring. But somehow the Philly defense falls apart and the lane is wide open. Brunson able to drive through the lane, drop a little floater in, and it's a 95 89 Knicks lead with under a minute. And it was at that point when game certainly wasn't over, but that's when I started to really have confidence they were going to win, and that's what happened. But again, all the credit in the world to Brunson for doing this without a lot of help from the usual suspects. Josh Hart had one of the weirdest stat lines you'll ever hear. 0 for 7 shooting from the field. He had 16 rebounds, including 5 offensive rebounds, 3 block shots, 4 points all from the free throw line, and 5 fouls. 
He had a great, terrible game is how I would verbalize it. And then you have uh, Dante DiVincenzo, who couldn't hit a three uh, pretty much until the third quarter. You know, his shooting was really frustrating, but when he gets hot, he gets hot, and he basically nails threes on back-to-back -back possessions. But all the credit in the world to OG and Anobi, as we said. Eight for 16 shooting, 14 rebounds, three block shots, amazing perimeter defense. This is exactly why the Knicks traded R.J. Barrett, why they traded Emmanuel Quigley was to bring Ananobi in, and that resulted in Philadelphia shooting 6 for 24 from the field in the fourth quarter. 6 for 24. Three points in the last five minutes, all on free throws. Their last field goal of the game was a dunk with a little over five minutes left. All the credit in the world to the Knicks defense, but a lot of blame on the Sixers for not being able to make shots. But you look at some of the, uh, we'll go, go through some of the final stats here. Knicks field goal shooting, 37 of 86, 43%, compared to Philadelphia, 29 of 82 for just 35.4%. Wow. The free throws, that was the biggest thing that I did not like. Knicks shot only 16 of 26 from the charity stripe, 76ers 25 of 29, but the Knicks had 10 more rebounds than Philadelphia. The offensive rebounds, enormous. 15 offensive rebounds. 15 out of the 52 were on the offensive glass, and that is something we've said. Thibodeau has emphasized over the last few months, and even without Mitchell Robinson, who's one of the best in the world at doing it, the Knicks still dominated the offensive glass. And the block shots, 11 block shots for the Knicks, compared to just five for the 76ers. And now it's back to New York on April 30th for Game 5, and the Knicks have a chance to close this series out and advance to play either Indiana or a very beat-up Milwaukee team that's missing both of its superstar players. What a game it was. Let's see what happens the rest of the day. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you right back here with more content from you know where. The Wicker Chair.